Alrighty, so good evening everyone. My name is Tiffany Stewart Stanley and I'm the Director of External Affairs for Douglas County and we are so happy to see so many of you all here tonight at the 2019 How to Do Business in Douglas County um, hosted by our Vice Chairman and District 2 Commissioner Kelly Robinson. So we will start the, tonight's program. Um, do we have any elected officials here? So we don't have any yet, so we would like to acknowledge our elected officials um, that are here. All right. And next, we will um, go into our program with remarks from our Vice Chairman and District 2 Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Um, Commissioner Robinson is in his third year, um, I'm sorry, third term, his 10th year of service to Douglas County. He is the Chair of the Finance and Transportation Committee and he also is the vice chair of the how I'm sorry the procurement committee and the chair of the housing committee. He has 20 years of banking experience. Um, he was an executive consultant and an international consultant, and he spent three years as a university instructor at Georgia State University. So, I at this time I'd like to welcome Vice Chairman and Commissioner Kelly Robinson to come to the stage and give us some remarks. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Um, how are y'all doing today? Good, good. Hopefully you enjoyed um, the hors d'oeuvres. And we're going to be sensitive to time. We're, we're, we're a little behind, but we recognize people had to get here. But we also recognized uh, we needed to provide some refreshments. So we're, we're very thankful. Um, again, my name is Kelly Robinson. And um, I appreciate you for being here. This is our second, and we're going to call it our annual, Tiffany, our second annual um, How to Do Business in Douglas County. Last year we, had, we did one called How to Do Business with Douglas County. And I'm going to take some time. We, we've got a couple of guest speakers, but I need to you know, buy a little time here. So I'm going to tell a little story. If you think about those who know me, um, I came into our office exactly 10 years ago this month. Right, so I was elected in 2008, came in in 2009. And the very first thing, now this is after a 20 year run as a senior vice president of Wachovia Bank, over a $4 billion portfolio. I've been around the world, Madrid, um, Hamburg, Germany, um, Japan, uh, London as an international consultant. And so I had all this experience and I'm like, okay, now I'm about to be an elected official. Right, what do I do with that? I share that to say that the very first phone call I made when I came in was I called um, our executive director of the Chamber of Commerce at that time, Kelly Boatwright. And I did that because prior to that, also during my you know, off time, I used to be involved in ministries. Um, I grew up at World Changers at Creflo Dollar Ministry, and so I spent about five years helping them with their small business and you know, how, to, how to get a vision. Five years after that, I, I, I participated in an organization called Kings and Priests, a men's only ministry that focused on entrepreneurship development for men. Um, five years after that, um, over at Word of Faith Church, um, um, Bishop Dale Browner, the Browner Business Institute, which is here today, I spent five years there developing small businesses. All right, that was part of me actually going on and becoming an instructor at Georgia State University, where I taught um, decisions of science, um, which is statistics to sophomores. I taught. Um, entrepreneurship to junior, and I taught the capstone strategy class um, at the School of Business, J. Mac Robinson School of Business at Georgia State. And I'm giving you all that context of why this event is important to me, right? Why this is so important. Because if anybody has been in life, and this is the key thing, so if anybody has been through life, and I was married for about 16 years, and everybody knows my story, but I have to tell it for context. Like, okay, so what do you do? You've been married for 16 years and now you went through a divorce, a life event. Boom. What do you do? Right? What happens when you're married? You went from two incomes to one income to no income in 60 days. What do you do? Right? And so everybody has a gift, a talent, or a hobby that can be monetized. Right? So it's always about being, you've got to be self-sufficient. There's a degree that every now and then, yeah, job, markets, okay. Now think about it, when I came in 08 being a banker, um, you know, there's not much going to happen right there during that time period, right? The mortgage industry was melting down. I had to hustle, right? I had to create my own opportunity. So I put out my shingle. I leveraged my opportunity. I went and raised about a million dollars um, through personal people that I knew and stuff, accredited investors. And I, now I'll tell you this later and why this is relevant. 
But, but Sarah, back to the story why I called the chamber, because I said, okay, back in 08, we're melting down. Think about where Douglas County was there. People have heard the story, but there's a lot of new people. We, we were number one in the state in foreclosures, number one in the state in distressed sales. We were number two in the region in uh, what they call uh, unemployment, and we were fourth in the nation for um, personal bankruptcy. That was a bad place for Douglas County in um, 09 when I was coming in 10 years ago. Think about that atmosphere and fast forward where we are 10 years later. A little bit different time. There were no jobs. We had high unemployment. We had high foreclosures, right? It was a very bad time. Big businesses, they did a pretty good job. They sustained themselves. Um, if you look at our digest, the commercial and industrial pretty much held. Your property values did what? Drop 40%. They barely just come back to par now. We're just now growing. Yes, um, this past Friday and um, uh, this past what? Last week at the chamber, we had um, an individual there, um, Dr. Joey Smith. He was with the University of West Georgia. And he's our, he's our, our favorite economist that comes out and speaks every year and, and, and sets expectations. So I need y'all to hear this. And so he gave these great statistics about how we're doing, um, everything from new growth and um, you know just how we're doing. I'll net it to this, that Douglas County is doing quite well. You know, we're about, you know, quite well is relative. We're doing well in the sense that we've got a little over 2% growth year over year. We're healthy, moving like a turtle. Think about it. We're healthy. If anybody watched a turtle in the, in the backyard, man, you're like, okay, now how did he get all the way down there? It moves, it's moving steady. Right? We're, 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 we're solid. We don't have a lot of largesse on us. We, we don't have no extra padding about like me. It's solid. It's firm. It's going to do what it do, but it's going steady. Right? Our unemployment, I think the statistic says right now seasonally adjusted, we're right around 3.8%. Not bad. Not bad. We're, we're moving along. Which if you think about it, we've got 140,000 people here in Douglas County. Roughly 140, what, 143, 231, something like that. Um, out of that, we probably got roughly around, what, 35,000 students, all right, so it dropped me down to about 100. Um, as it relates to employable people, which is 25 years or older, that's about 95,000 people. And we've got a pretty decent unemployment rate, right? All right, so that means that roughly around 75,000 people are actively employed, actually live right here, work right here, 75,000. How many small businesses do you think we got? Anybody? Take a guess. A thousand. Anybody else? Three hundred. Anybody else? All right. All right. That's that's good. Relative range. So think about it. We got ninety. Let's say seventy-five thousand people in Douglas County, which is pretty much half the population, is actually working. All right. So that's seventy-five thousand, which means there's some there's some there's some balance there. There's roughly, I'm talking to James Worthington, our Director of Development Services that oversees occupational tax and business licenses. As of this morning, uh, we have roughly what they want to say about 2,300, right, right around 3,000, what we're going to call renewals. In other words, renewing your business licenses. All right? On top of that, you had about 1,000 new ones every year. So in Douglas County, we've got 4,000 businesses, and that's everything from Switch, Amazon, Google, all the way down to the Mon Pa that's baking cookies, right? There's no differentiator, right? I'm just giving these statistics. All right, so, so that being said, so we've got about four, let's just, just I can rough it off people who don't even report. Let's say it's just 5,000 for the sake of the conversation. So 75,000 people who are working and 5,000 businesses, okay? We've got about 20,000 people that are not on the roll. They're, they're not necessarily over in the um, penitentiary or in the jail, but, but nonetheless, there's, there's, there's some room there. Uh, those individuals who are working, um, yes, we have a livable wage here, I hear, but okay, we know wages have been pretty flat. And anybody knows me, I'm going to tell you the truth about numbers. I say, okay, guys, the numbers have been flat. I, I appreciate the fact that everybody got a job, but you ain't got much discretionary, right? No? Okay, maybe y'all read a different book. All right, and the reason I say that is that this is important. Why are we here today? Why are we here? Ten years later, it's like, okay, Douglas County is right to now move forward, right, and really create opportunity. You know, having a job is important, but that's, that's, that's just, that'll keep you going for a period of time. But what happens when you have hiccups? 
if less than 6% of all people have any type of savings, right? You say, just small amount, right? We're living paycheck to paycheck. I mean, you gotta remember, I, I represent what, roughly about 35,000 people. I talk to my citizens. I can look people in their eyes. I can hear what they're saying by the way, like, okay, it's tight, right? And so they're looking for opportunities. And so one of the things that we saw as Board of Commissioners, which is like, okay, we've been working on this, working on this. Yes, we had to stabilize the infrastructure and transportation. Yes, we had to get the big economic development going. Yes, we're working on housing. But at the same point, it was always, what about the little guy? We give great tax incentive to the big guy, but what about the little guy? All right, so I said all that just to, to give, again, I had to buy five minutes, just to, to, to give you some context of, okay, so where do we go from here? So the question that we had today was going to answer a couple of questions um, about small businesses. What are the opportunities that exist in Douglas County and what type of help may be here? And I apologize, uh, what type of help is in here? That being said, we're looking for um, a few good men and women to step up, right? Everything can't be done with what I want to call with the county. Last year, um, all contracts that go forth out of Douglas County is not with the government. So we're trying to create an atmosphere that you guys need to work together in the private sector as well. There's nothing wrong with working for somebody else. That's not my point. My point is just to make sure you diversify your income in such a way that you're, you're not hurt. Because look at it this way. If the president spends trillions of dollars, and you've heard his story every year, governors spend billions of dollars, what, every year. Us at the county and city, we spend, what, millions every year. Those people who need to be in place to get those contracts will do so. Whether it's 60 to 75, 7% of that, don't, they're gonna get those contracts. But the question is, who gets it? Who's what they call shovel ready? All right, so put that to the side. That's just government. Now, what about non-government, private sector? There's plenty of opportunity out there. There is some discretionary income, but the question is, what do you do about getting it? And how do you go about getting it? All right, so that being said, that's just sort of my storyline. So what I'm gonna do right now is just, again, I want you to think about really just two key things. And um, hopefully you guys got a sheet of paper here. And uh, what is one of the key things that you guys have ever heard about starting a business? I'm just gonna stay there. Key thing, what is a key inhibitor to starting a business? Money. Okay, I hear money, I hear business plans, what else? They fail. Why do they fail? I heard marketing. Because they give up. Capital. They faint. Yes. They give up. Anybody else? Research to make sure that it's a great product for the consumer, what they need. Okay. Research. The reason I'm doing this, guys, we are filming this. Um, this will be on the archives of Douglas County, but I want to be able to capture these comments. But also, what else do y'all want to get out of today? This is sort of what they call those parking lots. Have you ever been in the company and stuff? And they're just like, okay, what's your expectation? So it sounds like you want to know, how do I get around these stumbling blocks? How do I get access to money? Perhaps how do I get a, a, uh, some help with some plan? Um, I heard marketing. I heard some encouragement because somebody may faint. Give me one more. Anybody else? Perseverance. Perseverance. Okay. All right, so again, those are things that we're going to um, provide you some insight with. We've got some technical advisors here. Um, we've got a panel that's going to be coming up here pretty soon to talk about that. Um, if you look at that, um, after that, we're going to have a CEO panel. They're going to come up and talk about their testimonies and what they've gone through. We'll also have time at the very end to allow all of you to, to weigh in and ask questions. But, but if you think about, uh, and I'm going to leave this as we segue. And, and Tiffany, are we ready? Is our second person? Okay, good. All right. That being said, um, if, if you think about it, where Douglas County really is, and, and I'm picking back up the story when I called Cali Boatwright, and it was at that time, it was like, okay, we, we, we got to get the, the average person going, because every 30 days, those bills are due. Every 30 days, what do I do? Right? How do I make up for that difference that may be in my household, and we want to keep this real? What do I do? I go back to skills, talents, and montages. At the time, the county just wasn't ready to, to really focus on the small guy. This is what they told me, this guy from Georgia Power, look at me now, Mr. Robinson, you're, 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 you're a little ahead of us right now. We, we're comfortable where we're at. I'm like, but don't you see the economy? Don't, don't you get it? And it's like, well, just slow down a little bit. 
And there was a setting of expectations when I came in. It was like, okay, I got I to I gotta hold. So I've been holding this for 10 years, recognizing we could have used this 10 years ago, but the county didn't have the infrastructure. We didn't have the leadership of the current chamber that we're hearing about right now. We didn't have the leadership of the current economic development in place. We didn't have the current leadership of the water sewer authority in place. We didn't have a current administrator. We didn't have a lot of things back then that now it's shifted. It's more nimble. It's more adaptive. It's more enlightened. It's more progressive. And so I'm encouraged by that. So I'm coming out the gate saying this is the time where we're going to really move forward really push on either incubating or accelerating those individuals that deserve it, who want to be taxable, who want to employ other people, who want to make a difference. There's nothing wrong with working out of your home, but really talking about doing scale. So that being said, I just wanted to set expectations. Um, that we've got a great night tonight. Um, I'm going to go ahead and yield the floor. I'm going to come back in a few minutes because I'm actually going to facilitate um, the actual panels themselves. I, I, I left that to myself. I am hosting this, but it's something I, I feel passionate and dearly about. So that being said, I'm going to yield. Tiffany, come on up and let's keep this going. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson, for those remarks. Um, at this time, I'd like to acknowledge our District 3 uh, County Commissioner, Commissioner Terenia Carthen. She's in the audience with her, her, us tonight, so let's give her a hand. Thank you so much, Commissioner, for being here. So at this time, I will introduce our next um, speaker, um, Attorney and State Representative William Bodie. He is the State Representative for Georgia House District 62, which encompasses Douglas and Fulton County. He is the managing partner of the Bodie, um, Bodie and Law Associates. Um, and like Commissioner Kelly Robson, he is also very passionate about economic development and small business. Um, he recently hosted the District 62 Small Business Development Summit, um, which he partnered with Douglas County and Fulton County. So he also wants to get small businesses going in our er in our area. So please, let's give uh, State Representative William Bodie a hand. Thank you all uh, for being here tonight. Um, <clears throat> like uh, my, my dear friend stated earlier, uh, is that small business development is very important, is very critical to what we're doing here uh, in Douglas County, but on the state level. Um, the state of Georgia is very proud of the, I would say, honor of being the best state to do business in the whole state of, or this whole country uh, for six years in a row. So Georgia is the best state to do business for six years in a row. And the reason why is that we have a very strong foundation of small businesses. Uh, the last time I looked, uh, 2018, the last numbers came out, we had uh, a million small businesses just in the state of Georgia, a million. Um, and with that million, they actually employed 1.6 million Georgia citizens. So that is a big, big number uh, so I would say small businesses are the driving engine of what we do in the state of Georgia. So how do we get to the point of starting a small business? And I, and I appreciate Commissioner Kelly Robinson for putting this on and, and facilitating this because uh, I would say he's been just a bedrock on this issue. Uh, since I've been out here, uh, when I say out here as a state representative since 2000 in 16 when I was elected, uh, but before I was even elected in 2011, I started my own business here in Douglas County. I'm actually, my day job, I'm a lawyer, and I still have my practice here in Douglas County. And one of the first people that I reached out to was Commissioner Kelly Robinson, uh, and I kind of was like, what did I need to do to get going and get started, even before politics? And the one thing I can say about Douglas County and being a small business owner is that not only the local elected officials, you can reach out to them uh, for encouragement and for a path to move forward, but, the small, but for also small business, you have the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the Chamber is very, very, very uh, good in helping me to springboard my business. And how do they do that? Well, we had a big ribbon cutting ceremony. They did press for me. Uh, and that all came with my membership. But being a small business owner is going to take a lot of work. Uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to partner with uh, 
uh, the, the SBA, the Small Business Association or Administration, I'm sorry, is because they have access to capital. Uh, what Commissioner uh, Robinson was stating earlier, a lot of individuals don't have access to capital to start their own business. Mm -hmm. And so that has been a roadblock uh, for a lot of individuals. It's definitely been a roadblock for minorities. It's been a roadblock for uh, 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 women. It's been a roadblock for anybody that wants to start a business. So the SBA is a resource. Uh, also, you have other resources like ACE, uh, the ACE Loan Company, which if you're trying to start a business and you need about $50,000 in capital, you can actually go through them to actually get that done and facilitate that. And they're a nonprofit organization. So basically what I'm saying is, if you want to start a small business, it's there. Uh, the resources are there, the, the, the structure is there, but it's going to be some ebbs and flows. So with that being said, you have to have a game plan going into it, i.e. a roadmap. What is your roadmap? You have to have a business plan because you won't know how to get from point A to point B to point C all the way to Z unless you have a professional business plan. If you don't have a professional business plan, you might as well not even start a business and try to go into it because you won't know what your goals are and how to achieve those goals. Because one thing with business, most small businesses don't last five years. Most small businesses fail within the first year. And the reason why they fail because people fail to plan. So if you plan accordingly, you can move forward and get past that one-year mark. So when you have a small business, you normally don't get the, rec the name recognition until year number three. And once you start to get the, the name recognition, now in some businesses like my business, you start to have repeat customers. And people coming back and your name starts to make business for you. Uh, but I would say, if you can get through year number five, then you're on the way to moving forward and have a successful business that can be sustained over time. But I kind of want to end with saying that starting a business is a journey um, and it's not a destination per se. You're going to always have ups and downs. You're always going to have things that you want to do. You're always going to want to increase. And you're going to always want to keep building your brand and your company. But I would say just stay with your roadmap, your business plan. Continue to believe in yourself. And also reach out to other sources outside of the box to get capital, to market, to network to build your brand, to build your business. Because as Commissioner Robinson was stated earlier, I encourage as many people as possible to be your own boss. Because at the end of the day, being your own boss is you, it's your brand, it's, it's what you build. And so if you can't be your own boss, that's fine too. But if you can and you have that will and that desire, I would definitely say move forward, Try to be the best you can at it and, and work hard at your business and your brand. Are there any questions? Anybody has any questions? Well, thank you. Thank you all. And I appreciate uh, Commissioner Robinson, which is a one of my, uh, I would say, greatest or hardest working constituents and, uh, of District 62. So I appreciate you, Commissioner Robinson, all your hard work and your partnership along with the entire BOC. Uh, and getting things done here in Douglas County and at the state capitol. And Madam Commissioner, good to see you as well, and congratulations again. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, State Representative William Bodie. Um, next on our program, um, we had scheduled um, Ashley Bell, the Regional Administrator for the U.S. Small Business Administration, but due to some unforeseen circumstances, he was not able to be here for, with us tonight, and we do plan on rescheduling him to come and speak as soon as possible. So next, we will move on to a presentation um, by our, our uh, Communications Director for the Douglas County SPLOST, Mr. David Good, he'll come up and give us some information on opportunities with the Douglas County SPLOST.
thank you Director Stuart Stanley and uh, thank you also to Commissioner Robinson for allowing me this opportunity to speak. Um, as everyone is, knows, um, I represent the SPLOS, but more than that, I represent as being a citizen of Douglas County, as being a business owner in Douglas County. Um, there's a lot of opportunities that come through SPLOS and there's a lot of opportunities that come through Douglas County. The problem is, is that a lot of times, if you guys have seen um, some of my presentations when it comes to vendors report, is that throwing 37% of the dollars that are coming through are actually going to uh, people within Douglas County and within the 30 miles of Douglas County. And we track, track it because we do have business owners that are in Villa Rica, but they're just on the other side over there and uh, into the next county or go, dealing with, uh, I believe, Atlanta and then also South Fulton and other areas. So the main thing that we're trying to do is make sure that everyone has the opportunity to go for these different uh, positions for these different projects. We have the large companies that come out. We'll have Carter Watkins or some of these companies that come in from outside of our area, but we want you, the small business owner that's right here in Douglas County, to have the same opportunity. So if you get a chance, make sure you definitely visit our website, which is 2016splos.com, and you will see everything that we are actually doing. And if you go to the county's website, which is Celebrate Douglas, you'll be able to go into programming and find the same information. And one other thing that we really want to push is that it doesn't matter what type of contract that's going out, if it's that's even for construction, but if the only thing that you, that you can do is actually do pour concrete, do curb and gutter, you can always end up becoming a sub of that company that gets the prime. So all because you're not able to do everything that the contract calls for, you might be able to do a, a part on it. Even if it's on a technical services piece, we end up having a redesign coming up for our website. So therefore, if you have technical services, that's what you can definitely look into. And I believe our new um, commissioner, uh, Trini Carthen, that's something that she is a strong advocate for, is for us to have a very strong uh, website and that therefore it'd be easy for everyone to see. So if there's anything that you guys feel that you do as a small business, guess what? A part of the SPLOS can do that. We are building two verticals right now that should come on by summertime. It's going to be the Senior Center um, over there in District 1 in Lithia Springs, and then also the uh, Multipurpose Center, which is going on over there in District 2 at Boundary Waters. There's also some concession stands going on. All those different things that's, that's coming up are all going to be within this year. Um, by the time summer goes on, all of our, our largest projects will be going on, which will be, number one, the Motorola uh, radio system, which is actually the largest project that we have. Right now, it's uh, probably around $15 million that is allocated for that. Then also, we have a 25,000 square foot multipurpose center, so make sure you guys are on the front end of getting that done. And if you can't get on the front end on that, guess what? That building is being built, therefore there are services going to be in there. There are things like computers that would be in there. There's going to be workout equipment. So therefore you might end up having being able to provide those things. If you end up working with a car dealership, we actually have vehicles that we buy every single year for our different uh, departments, which is going to be uh, fire, parks, and transportation. You'll have that opportunity if you work with those companies. So please make sure that you go to our website, see what's out there, and if you're not a vendor, there's no way you're going to get information from us except for whenever I run into you. But if you're not a vendor with Douglas County, please make sure that you get a chance to listen to Director Bill Peacock and learn how to become a vendor. And if you want to pick up some more information, if you have not done so, we have our table right outside where you'll get Mr. Peacock's information as well as information on the SPLOS. So thank you very much. Are there any questions? Awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir, Ms. Humphreys. Has um, design started on the senior center, concession stand, and multi-purpose center? Have you selected? Uh, right, yeah, the, the designers, uh, we're in design phase for all three, but the, none of them are under, uh, none of them are under construction except for the uh, concession over at, um, at Boundary Waters. I so believe. There, the contract for design has already been? Yes. A selection of the name. Correct for the design, but not but not for the not for the build, just for the design. Are, are there any questions? Thank you very much.
Thank you so much to our great panel that we just had. Um, before we bring up our next speaker, I'd like to acknowledge another great supporter of small businesses in Douglas County, our esteemed chairman, Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones is here with us, so I just wanted to acknowledge her. All right, and so next we will be hearing from um, one of my esteemed colleagues, the Director of Purchasing, um, Mr. Bill Peacock. He is a wealth of information, um, and he's here to give you guys some information on procurement opportunities. So let's give him a hand. Good evening. I'm Bill Peacock. I'm the Director of Purchasing for Douglas County, and I hope I live up to the intro that my esteemed colleague gave me. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be here tonight, Vice Chair uh, Robinson. Um, Madam Chair, good evening, how are you? Commissioner Cothram, how are you? Good to see you. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how, to, how you can do business with Douglas County. The thing tonight is how to do business in Douglas County, uh, but we're in Douglas County, so I just wanna share with you some of the things that uh, are, are possible uh, for you, opportunities that you may find to, to do business with Douglas County. The Board of Commissioners desires to allow all county businesses the opportunity to provide the county their services and products. We will always provide a fair and honest opportunity to every business, especially those that are located in Douglas County. Our county ordinance actually provides a 3% de de deference, if you will, uh, from uh, businesses that are outside the county versus those that are within the county. If we receive bids from multiple vendors, some inside the county and some outside, uh, and if we're looking for a, the lowest price, your price could be 3% above the, the vendors outside the county, and we would still be able to do business with you. Depending on the size of your business, you could be the main subcontractor, I'm sorry, you could be the main contractor or at, at least a sub working for a larger business, and several folks have touched on that tonight, that if your uh, business isn't set up yet to actually be the prime or the main on a job, uh, you should be looking at uh, using your uh, talents as a subcontractor, perhaps with a larger firm. The first step to do business with Douglas County is to complete and submit your vendor application. I do not know you're out there if you do not complete and submit a vendor application. Uh, currently we have about 7,000 vendors within our database. Uh, so we would love to make that number even higher and, and continue to give us opportunity to do business again with multiple uh, folks from within Douglas County. There are copies of the vendor application out on the table out front, uh, or you can also go to our county website, www.celebratedouglascounty.com, and go to the uh, purchasing department and you'll be able to pull that vendor application down electronically if you need to. The panel bef just before me made some very, very strong, powerful comments, uh, and many of those centered around the fact that you have to take a proactive approach to know about the opportunities within the county. I cannot reach out to everybody in this room and share with you the opportunities that are there. I can provide you a, a way to find out, but I cannot individually touch you and tell you what the opportunities are. Um, if, if we have a project that's, a project that's large, um, uh, we always advertise in the local Sentinel. Um, whenever we have a bid or a proposal or are asking for qualifications, uh, it's a requirement of state law that we, we uh, run that um, information, that advertisement in the local paper. So read the paper and, and say it with what uh, opportunities uh, you can find there. Visit the county's website. Uh, as David uh, said earlier, you know, we have the SPLOS projects that uh, are listed there, but that's also where we list all of the upcoming uh, or current uh, bids that are out. Uh, so you can find all that information on the county website. 
Another thing I would suggest you do, and Madam Chair, I hope you don't get mad at me for this, but, but come attend the bi-monthly commission meetings. We have work sessions uh, on alternate Mondays, and then we have the actual legislative session uh, on, on the Tuesday after that. If you want to find out about what's happening in Douglas County and what the opportunities are, we discuss many of those at those meetings. <laughs> Chaired by our Madam Chair. I would suggest that when you're, uh, when you're considering a name for your business, identify what the service or product is that you, you want to provide. Uh, that makes it easier for me to understand what business you're in, whether you're a, you're a plumber or a, a court reporter or um, a salesman that sells cleaning products or anything else. Uh, try to make it easy for me to know the type of business that you're in. If your business is small, again, as I said earlier, you can look on our website to see which larger companies actually received a contract. And then you take the proactive um, steps to reach out to those, those larger businesses and offer them your services as a subcontractor. And the last thing I'll, I'll talk about again is the SPLOST. As David said, we have several products, I'm sorry, several projects. Uh, the Senior Center is about a, a five or six million dollar project. The, uh, the rec center out at Boundary Waters is about a seven and a half million dollar project. Uh, we're building concession stands in most of the parks. Uh, we're putting up new fences in many of the parks. Uh, so there are opportunities for small business to, um, to interact and, and do business with Douglas County. And we're anxious for you to do that. Uh, one of the charges that Madam Chair has given to all of us as well as Vice Chairman Robinson is that we've got to involve our local businesses more. So that's what we're hoping to do, and that's why we're here tonight. Uh, that ends my comments. I'll be uh, very willing to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Director Peacock. And now we will go to our last group for the night. Um, our entrepreneurial panel, and these are the people who are living it day to day, and we are so excited to have such a great group of entrepreneurs here. So at this time, we will call Mr. Mark DeNice of DeNice Companies, Ms. Sarah, President of Medicus Medical Clinic, Jamila Baylor-Stroud of Anything But Ordinary Events and More, Nicola Robinson of SR Law Group, and Ms. Rita Fasina thomas of Strate Strategic Business Services. And this panel will also be moderated by our Vice Chairman, Kelly Robinson. All right, let's give them a hand clap and appreciate you. Thank you all for being here. Um, I, again, what I'm going to do right now before we, we release the audience, Madam Chair, please come join me, please. Uh, and, and Madam Carthen, you can come as well if you want to stand. But Madam Chair, and the reason I bring her up is that, again, uh, I just want her to confirm uh, our commitment to small business and, 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 and the platform that we're, we're trying to create an atmosphere for you. Right? We're always talking about what is, our, what is our elected officials doing for us. We're creating audiences like this. We're creating moments like this. So now the question is, what will you do? So with that being said, I'm not going to go long. Madam Chair, come on up, whatever you want to say. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. Good evening, everyone. And I know we are, uh, time is of the essence. And I just wanted to just say that uh, small businesses, businesses are the heartbeat of the community and also of this nation. Uh, you all uh, carry the torch and you make things happen and I'm so proud of what you're doing here in Douglas County. Um, you've made a difference. Uh, every day I wake up knowing that small businesses in D Douglas County is the one that keep the doors open and keep this county moving forward. So we can't do it without you. We're here to support you. Whatever you need, please uh, contact me and the Board of Commissioners and we will make sure that we uh, make this happen. And I'm so glad that we were able to host this event and we look forward to hosting many more. And I thank uh, Vice Chairman Robinson for going above and beyond to make this happen for our citizens here in Douglas County. And you'll hear more from us, so thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening, 
Good evening, everyone. I know I am between you and your car, so I won't be long. Uh, as a small business owner here in Douglas County, I've been doing um, business here for about 15 years. So it was before I ever became your county commissioner. Um, I just know that it is so important that you use your time and your gifts within your county because when you all open up small businesses in the county, you start legacies. We want to grow businesses here in Douglas County. We want to grow that base because that economic development base spawns educational development base. So we want you here. We need you here. Small businesses are the heartbeat, just like Madam Chair said, of the county. And as a small business owner, I implore you, don't take any talents that you have for granted. I'm in the healthcare IT business. Nobody could have ever told me I would have been in politics, but service is what I'm really about. So servicing and being a consultant and just helping people to find what they need is how I got to where I am. So I just implore you, take the opportunity, go out to our um, our website, Celebrate Douglas County. It's going to be better, I promise. But what is up there now is um, we'll help you. Go out to Bill Peacock and find out how you can become a vendor. Access all of the panel members that you saw up here. Um, Nicola, Rita, all of them, they're here to help you. We're here to help you. So again, take opportunities that are before you and tell others. Thank you so much for coming out. And thank you to our external affairs Tiffany and all of the staff, thank you so much for putting this on. Can we give them a hand clap? <laughs> With that being said, thank you for coming out. And one second. <laughs> Thank you again so much to our commissioners. It, it's such a great thing that we have commissioners and Vice Chairman Robinson leading the charge with our small businesses. And there are a lot of counties that don't do these programs. So we need to give them another round of applause for doing this. Um, I'd also like to thank our communications director, Mr. Rick Martin, and his team, our DCTV 23 manager, TJ Jacklinski, our communications specialist, Lena um, Hardy and um, our external affairs coordinator, Tabria Cobb, for all their hard work with this program, and Shannon Belletti of Belletti Photography as our photographer. Once again, thanks to all of our panelists and our speakers. Um, I hope everyone gets home safe and has a great night. Thank you so much.